cementum. The cementum is one of the hard tissues of the periodontium. So periodontium is composed of two hard tissues and two soft tissues. The two soft tissues include your gingiva and the periodontal ligament and the two hard tissues include your cementum and your alveolar bone. So cementum is one of the hard tissues of the periodontium. Let's see the further slides. Now what is cementum? Cementum is an avascular mesenchymal tissue. Okay, it's highly calcified tissue. It's calcified avascular mesenchymal tissue that forms the outer covering of the anatomical root. So your cementum is avascular. It is calcified and it is a mesenchymal tissue. So mesenchymal tissue is a tissue which originates from your mes mesoderm. So because it's a part of a connective tissue, so cementum is a form of a connective tissue, therefore it takes origin from the mesoderm. That's why the definition also includes that it is a mesenchymal tissue, yes. And then it is calcified tissue, it is avascular, meaning it has no blood supply, but and it forms the outer covering of your root surface. So that describes your cementum. How does cementum form? That is the process of cementum formation is determined or it's called as cemento. Genesis. So the formation or the development of cementum is called as cementogenesis. Now, how is the cementum forming? We know that for the cementum to form, you need your deposition of dentine. Once the dentine is formed, what happens is there is an immediate break in the Hertwig's epithelial root sheet, so which is happening simultaneously. So this dentine gets directly exposed once the ep Hertwig's epithelial root sheath breaks it exposes your dental follicle cells the connective tissue of your dental follicle now these dental follicle cells are the ones which are responsible to get differentiated into your cementoblast so once they get differentiated into your cementoblast they lay down your cementum so i repeat the deposition of cementum after the deposition of cementum and simultaneously there is a break in your Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. Now once there is a break in the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath, your dentine is directly in contact with your dental follicular cells. So once they come in contact, they stimulate your dental follicular cells to differentiate into cementoblasts. So cementoblasts are the cells which will start laying down or depositing your cementum. So first the Organic matrix is lay, laid down, that is your cementoid, which gets calcified over a period of time, forming your cementum. Now, let's see the next slide, that is your cementum varieties. You have varieties of cementum. You can classify cementum according to three different classifications. One is your, based on the location on the teeth, okay? Based on the location, you have your coronal cementum. So, the ones which is present on your root surface, but towards the coronal half of the root will be your coronal cementum and the one towards your radicular will be your radicular cementum. What is based on cellularity? Based on the cellularity, you can classify your cementum into cellular cementum and your acellular cementum. Following that, you have based on the presence of fibril, whether you have fibers or not. So you have afibrillar cementum or fibrillar cementum. There's one important classification system of cementum which was given by Page and Schroeder into so they classified cementum into five types what are the five types of cementum that Page and Schroeder classified the first one is your acellular afibrillar cementum meaning to say that it has no cells and no fibers then comes your acellular extrinsic fiber cementum meaning to say it has no cells but it has it gives attachment to your extrinsic fibers, that is the fibers coming from your periodontal ligament, that is your terminal edges of your periodontal ligament fibers, Sharpie's fibers. Right. The third one is your cellular mixed stratified cementum, meaning to say this cementum has cells and it has different, a mixture of your fibers. You have both intrinsic and extrinsic fibers. And then you have your cellular intrinsic fiber cementum meaning to say it has cells the cementum has cells and it also has intrinsic fibers means it doesn't give this this cementum doesn't give attachment to your sharpies fibers but it has intrinsic fibers within it so any tissue will have connective tissue right it's a form it's again your cementum is a connective tissue so it would have fibers it would have cells so that those fibers within the connective tissue comprise of your intrinsic fibers and then the last one is your intermediate cementum and if you see in this previous slide we can see that 
based on the location you have your coronal and your radicular cementum based on cellularity it's acellular and cellular this explain the self explanatory acellular meaning it has no cells and cellular meaning it has cells okay now the other name for your acellular cementum is your primary cementum because it is a first formed cementum and then your cellular cementum is a secondary cementum which forms later in life okay and then you have presence or absence of fibers this we've already discussed fibrillar or afibrillar whether it has fibers or whether it doesn't have fibers now that finishes the varieties of cementum let's see what is the composition of cementum cementum is composed of an organic matrix and then it has an inorganic component apart from that it has even water how much of it is inorganic it is about 65% by weight is inorganic then organic is just about 23% and the rest of it is constituted by your water that is about 12% see the next slide let's see let's go a little bit in detail about the composition of cementum first we'll discuss about your organic matrix now this organic matrix of the cementum it primarily is composed of collagen which type of collagen again it is your type 1 and type 3 collagen apart from that you also have type 12 collagen and type 5 collagen now type 1 collagen comprises of 90 percent of your organic matrix okay of the collagen fibers and then type 3 is composed of just about five percent This collagen type 3 is just coats your collagen type 1. Okay. What are the collagen? What are the other various? I've, I've already told you that you have various types of collagen. You have type 1, type 3, type 5, type 12. Let's see where all it's present. Type 1 is a predominant. 90% of it is a type 1 collagen and it constitutes of, yes, 90% of your organic component. And then type 3 is the one which is a cross-linking collagen and it is found in higher concentration only during development and repair. And then you have your type 12 collagen which is triple helix. So it's a triple helix collagen which is bound to your type 1 collagen and you have the last one that is your matured in your matured form of cementum what you see is your type 5 and even type 14. Okay. Trace amounts of them are seen. When you see the arrangement of fibrils, how are the fibrils arranged? You have two patterns of arrangement, either your extrinsic pattern of arrangement or your intrinsic fibers. So you have extrinsic fibers and you have your intrinsic fibers. What are these extrinsic fibers? The extrinsic fibers of the cementum are nothing but your terminal edges of your Sharpie's fibers. So you know your Sharpie's fibers are terminal edges of your periodontal ligament. So you have a periodontal ligament, this is your tooth, this is your alveolar bone so in between is your periodontal ligament so your periodontal ligament has lots of collagen fibers right so the terminal portions of these ends of the collagen fibers are attached on one side to the cementum and on one side to your alveolar bone so they constitute your extrinsic fiber cementum namely your type 1 collagen and then you have your intrinsic fiber system that is your fibers which are present within your cementum its matrix itself If you can see this picture, E, whatever represented as E is your extrinsic fibers and they are arranged in a perpendicular fashion, okay? And the one which are cross-linking, the ones shaded in the intrinsic fibers, which are arranged in an irregular pattern, but they are more dense fibers. So what are these Sharpie's fibers? The Sharpie's fibers have already told that they are the terminal portions of your periodontal ligament fibers which give attachment or which get which get attached into your cementum on one side and alveolar bone on your other side. What are the non-collagenous proteins? Now we're finished with the collagenous that is your type 1 that is your organic matrix. So your organic matrix will always have Collagen proteins and non-collagen. What are the non-collagenous proteins? It's your osteonectin, osteopontin, and bone siloproteins. Coming to the inorganic constituent, you know your cementum constitutes about has 65% of mineral content. Now the first one is your enamel. Enamel has about 97% of inorganic constituent, followed by your dentine, about 70%, and then it is your bone that is about 65 uh, 65% and then it is your cementum which is a little less so it is the least calcified that is your 
cementum about 45 to 50 percent. Now your acellular extrinsic fiber cementum is more calcified when compared to your other forms of cementum. The hydroxy, how is these inorganic uh, pattern or inorganic uh, constituents arranged in? They form crystal patterns of hydroxy apatite crystals. They are ranged in 55 nanometer wide and 8 nanometers in thickness. Now, the most important part in cementum, other than your calcium and phosphate, at, at, you know, uh, uh, forming hydroxy apatite crystals, it also has fluoride. Now, cementum is supposed to have the highest fluoride content. Highest fluoride content in all, when compared to the all other mineralized tissues in the body is your cementum. Now, this also increases with age and also increases with nutritional and your fluoride intake. Okay. What is the thickness of cementum? Now, thickness is different in different areas of the root. And when you see in the coronal portion, it is just about 16 to 60 micrometers. When you come to the middle third and towards the apical portion, it is more thicker, about 150 to 200 micrometers. Yes, cementum formation is more rapid in your apical portion of the root. I told you as a result of uh, as a result of passive eruption because as the age advances you have a lot of attrition so in order to maintain the interocclusal height your tooth has to supra erupt or it will passively erupt into the oral cavity in order to maintain the distance interocclusal distance so in order to maintain the distance your apical portion of the root deposits more amount of cellular form of cementum okay in order to compensate for your at loss of tooth structure because of attrition now, cementum is thicker on the distal surfaces of the tooth when compared to your mesial surfaces. That is because, because of the functional stimulation, you always have a mesial shift, right? So, because of that, it is thicker on the distal side. Now, average thickness also differs in age. If you see in a younger individual, it is less thicker. It's about 90 micrometers and it's an older age in individual. It's about 215 micrometers and about 60 years average. What is the cemento enamel junction? What is the importance of the cemento enamel junctions? Why we need to know about cemento enamel junction? And then what are the various types of cemento enamel junctions? You have type 1, type 2, and type 3. The type 1 cemento enamel junction is where your cementum overlaps your enamel. Means, suppose this is your enamel and this is your cementum. So this cementum will overlap your enamel. So that junction will form your cemento enamel junction. It is seen about 60 to 65 percent of your individuals. So that's called as an overlap junction. When you come, the second one is your gap junction, uh, sorry, your butt junction. That is, your cementum and your enamel meet at one point, okay? At just one point, they meet, and that junction will become your cemento enamel junction. So the second form is your overlap we finish with the overlap that is seen in about 60 to 65 percent of the cases wherein your cementum overlaps your enamel and then the second one is your butt junction wherein your cementum will just meet your enamel at just one point and that will become your cemento enamel junction and now this is seen in just about 30 to 35 percent of cases the last form of or the type of cj is what is called as a gap junction in a gap junction your cementum and enamel will not meet so there is a gap between your cementum and enamel so your dentine is directly exposed now that will be the third type or the gap junction of cj and that is called or that is seen only in about 5 to 10 percent of the cases so these patients are the ones who, are, who have this type of cj that is a gap junction are more prone for dentinal hypersensitivity similarly with your 30 to 35 percent that is a type b type of cj if you can see in the picture the b wherein this there is a just a butt joint that is your cementum and your enamel just meet at a point so in those cases also you have dentinal hypersensitivity if this cementum gets resolved or it is removed either intentionally or unintentionally so the best cemento enamel junction would be your overlap wherein your cementum is completely covering your enamel what are the functions of cementum why do we need to have cementum if there's no cementum then your 
periodontal ligament where it's going to go and attach to so you always need a cementum right so if you have a cementum that's why when we talk about regeneration or you know new attachment when after a disease process after a periodontal disease when we talk about regeneration we we say that we need a new cementum we need new alveolar bone and we need new periodontal ligament so all these three will comprise of your regenerated tissue so first thing would be it provides anchorage to the teeth because it the sharpies fibers get attached to it okay and the second one it assists in maintaining an occlusal relation so we already told that it compensates for the loss of tooth structure as a result of attrition therefore it assists in maintaining your occlusal or interocclusal relationship yes and then it serves to maintain the width of the pdl space at your apex and then the cementum repairs root fracture suppose you have a root fracture a vertical horizontal root fracture vertical root fracture is highly impossible most of the cases the prognosis is very poor for a uh, vertical root fracture but when you have a horizontal root fracture if it is a minor one it can always undergo repair because your cellular cementum can repair it that's why it's also called as a reparative or a secondary cementum and then the fourth function is cementum causes sealing of your necrotic pulp okay a pical occlusion sometimes what happens because of your exposure of your dentinal tubules if if you have the capacity for the cementum to form it can seal off these dentinal tubules and reduce your dentinal hypersensitivity and also apically it can occlude your um, the apical foramen area therefore sealing off your necrotic pulp and preventing any further progression of your disease into the periapical tissues variations in cement now we finished with your physiology right let's talk about the little bit about the pathological part it can be sometimes developmental or sometimes it can be a pathological in origin when you see hypercementosis a condition called as hypercementosis meaning there's more or excessive production of your cement right it's also called as cemental hyperplasia right now this refers to the prominent thickening of your cement it can occur in two forms you have your localized form and you have your generalized form now this generalized thickening can be either in a, sp a spike fashion or nodular in appearance okay so these spike like generalized thickenings of hypercementosis are also called as your cemental spikes what are cementicles another variation in the cementum would be your cementicles now these cementicles are nothing but globular masses of cementum which are present within your periodontal ligament a tissue now this periodontal within the periodontal ligament now this period we know the periodontal ligament has some cells called as your epithelial cell rest of malice so now these can act as foci or forming your cementicles there can be a reason now they are less than 0.5 mm in diameter there are three types of cementicles you have your true cementicles you have your sessile or your free cementicles and then you have your attached cementicles and uh, sessile or your attached cementicles and your interstitial cementicles the other variation how does resorption and repair now resorption when does cementum undergo resorption cementum undergoes resorption because of some pathology either it can be a local cause or a systemic cause what are the local cause let's see what are the local causes you have your trauma from occlusion you have your orthodontic excessive orthodontic tooth movement so if you have beyond limit then it can undergo cemental resorption then you have your mal aligned erupting teeth any suppose you have a tooth and then adjacent to it you have a mal aligned tooth it means it's not it's it's not erupting in the right direction it suppose it's horizontally impacted so what happens there's a constant pressure on your adjacent teeth and as a result of which your this neighboring tooth can undergo cementum resorption apart from that you have any cysts and tumors of the jaws also can lead to cemental resorption that again a localized cause apart from that a tooth without an antagonist okay and then embedded reimplanted or a transplanted tooth so whenever you do any transplantation meaning to say you have extracted you have ex the, the, the six is uh, uh, has poor prognosis means it has no bone support so but the eight is very well uh, placed and it has good uh, vital periodontal ligament it's not diseased and then but there's no opposing eight so what do you do you can use this eight and then you can transplant it in case of six okay and that is called as not a transplantation but in these cases the the healing healing pattern for these uh, those auto transplanted teeth can either be because of some cemental resorption leading to resorption uh, 
replacement resorption or else you can have an ankylosis okay and then whenever you have a periapical and periodontal diseases then what are the systemic causes of cemental resorption any disease like your calcium deficiencies hypothyroidism and then your fibrous osseous dystrophy and your pages disease what are the types of uh, root resorption you can have a pathologic or a physiological type and then you can have an internal or an external resorption your internal resorption is also called as your pink tooth of mummery in case of your any periapical lesions or else your transient or progressive means it's just a temporary resorption or else it's a progressive form of a resorption for example your excessive orthodontic forces either if it's too much and if it's for a prolonged period of time the entire root can resorb and then your idiopathic or unknown cause okay that also can be a oh, lead to root resorption and there's something called as a physiological resorption now whatever we saw are all pathological causes right there's something physiological if you see in deciduous dentition your root undergoes resorption and then only your entire tooth exfoliates right what is cementoma cementoma is also called as periapical cemental dysplasia the origin of this uh, cementoma is uh, controversial it's not a true neoplasm though the term says cement oma oma meaning tumor but still it is a misnomer it is not a true tumor it is the main etiology for this can be because of mild chronic trauma and then any traumatic occlusions the clinical features it's mostly seen in females and it is in seen in age group less than 20 years and then common in mandibular incisor region next one is your true cementoma also called as your benign cementoblastoma so now that's why they've differentiated that is cementoma and this is true cementoma because it is truly cement truly a neoplasm of your functional cementoblasts okay it forms a large mass of the cementum or cementum like tissue on your tooth root if you see the next slide the last one is your cemental tears what are these cemental tears you can also have cemental tears the reasons can be anything it can be excessive occlusal forces age related or any iatrogenic or you know you're weakening the cementum and then le that leads to tear or anything or any periapical pathologies so what happens either this part of the cementum root if you can see the picture if you can see this picture so this is cemental tear now even this is cemental tear but this cemental tear the what you're seeing is unattached means it's the fragment of the cementum is free but this one is still attached so there's always a chance for this form of cemental tear to undergo repair okay that's it that would entire cover the entire session on cement